Hello, I am Panos Kodzathanasis, and this is ASEAN Movie Pulse Interviews. Today I'm here with Mr. Mohamed Ghazala, Assistant Professor of Animation and the Chair of the Cinematic Arts School of Fat University in Saudi Arabia. Hello, how are you, Mohamed? Hello, Kalispera. <laughs> Kalispera. <laughs> so, uh, tell me a bit about uh, Fat University. How long has it been there? What it is about? Some general information about the university. Yeah. So, uh, Afrit University is a uh, non for, uh, it's a private non for profit, uh, all female school, uh, established in 1999 uh, as, uh, as a first college for female uh, students in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And we started this uh, as uh, one college with several courses. Uh, in engineering and business and humanity. And in 2013, we established the first film school. Mm -hmm. This was uh, in collaboration with the University of Southern California. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. But you are not originally from Saudi Arabia, right? No, I'm an, an Egyptian. Ah. Well, uh, how did you end up there working in Saudi Arabia? <laughs> yeah, like... it's, uh, it wasn't uh, like, it wasn't planned that way to, to be until now here since we established it, but uh, uh, they were uh, like targeting uh, some professor from everywhere and I was coming just for an animation course. And then uh, I, I was hired or invited to be uh, as a chair. And uh, since 2014, I'm, I'm the chair and uh, we established a program together with a uh, lot of faculty from around the world. and. Uh, I believe we were uh, kind of lucky and successful with a lot of efforts, a lot of support from the university, from the government. In the beginning, it wasn't that easy, but uh, we have to find our own uh, way in a lot of uh, challenges, especially there was no any industry or any, uh, uh, any support for film uh, uh, production or even from uh, education. There was no any uh, previous program to support uh, uh, cinema. So we were the first one. And uh, luckily, it was uh, it was the first. And it was also for female. Usually, in uh, any academic program happening in Saudi Arabia, it was always starting with boys. And then after some years, it became for girls. And uh, uh, for cinema program, it was different. Mm -hmm. It was the opposite, and uh, it was firstly started with uh, female uh, students, and then only in 2022 we allow boys to come in uh, to uh -huh. study cinema, and this was quite unique. And I believe this is very unique, uh, uh, like unique model. Maybe in the entire world there is nothing like this, like all female uh, uh, cinema school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you tell me a bit more about the curriculum, <laughs> what it is about? How does it go? Yeah, our curriculum we developed with, uh, uh, with the School of Cinematic Arts of uh, University of Southern California uh, in Hollywood. And uh, we, we started with them in uh, an academic partnership since 2012. And uh, our president was, uh, was uh, she graduated from there and PhD in, in in business administration, and she really wanted to have such program uh, like uh, the USC uh, Cinematic Art School to be in Saudi Arabia. And then we have we started to adapt their own program. Uh, since that time, we have uh, made a market study and we we made some investigation. What is the need of the local? What is the need of the community? How to support the infrastructure? of cinema study and the production uh, in the country. And uh, we adopted four tracks from uh, the USC program. Uh, one is film production, animation, uh, screenwriting, and interactive media. And this is <clears throat> produce a Bachelor of Science in Cinematic Arts. Actually, we started with a different title called Visual and Digital Production, because this was the only thing allowed or like would be accepted by Ministry of, of Education. Uh, like film or cinema wasn't that welcome that time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I believe uh, we were lucky that uh, the Ministry of Education approved to have such curriculum. 
which is mainly for film production, but we title it uh, uh, with something that will be accepted from their side. And uh, we started in fall 2013, and we graduated the first student in 2017, when we have the first graduates. And uh, they were from animation, film production, and screen writing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. please continue. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, until 2020, we get uh, the approval from the Minister of Education to change our name to be a program of cinematic arts mm -hmm. instead of visual and digital production. So this is the accurate name or title for our program, which is totally about film production. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, do students have to make a film in order to graduate? Is that how it works? Yeah, for, uh, for our students during the, their journey in four years, uh, they have to study everything about uh, film production, starting from uh, pre-production, from uh, literature review, studying the history, and also to develop the script and uh, develop the love line, develop everything, the dialogue, uh, develop the sound design, cinematography, photography, and uh, they are also studying directing, studying uh, uh, visual effects, post-production, television, animation, stop motion, every single part of cinema production, they are taking at least part of it. So they are qualified enough to be uh, a filmmaker and uh, part of their graduation requirement is to submit their final film, uh, graduation film, and this uh, supposed to be not less than five minutes for film production and three minutes for animation. Mm -hmm. And uh, we allow them to use whatever medium as much as it's audiovisual uh, uh, content. And uh, this uh, might be a short film, maybe a documentary, maybe experimental, maybe animation, maybe music video. It's whatever uh, uh, audiovisual content. Mm -hmm. And uh, what would you say, how would you say is the quality of these final films? Are you satisfied, let's say? <clears throat> yeah, and so far, many of our graduates are successful and uh, they, all of them are, are graduating, but also some of them, they found uh, their past outside the campus with their own movies. And uh, some of those movies were uh, successfully accepted in film festivals and some of them, were uh, selected and uh, shortlisted in many uh, important film festivals, including Cairo Film Festival, Carthage, Palm Springs, uh, Malmo Arab Film Festivals. And uh, some of them won prizes, top prizes in, in festivals, and they get mentions and uh, get uh, awards and get grants. Uh, we luckily get uh, some of our graduates last uh, let's see, film festival. They won two two prizes in uh, in the market. If you were following the, the result, uh, two of the top uh, prizes was uh, for two of our graduates, mm -hmm. Sarah Misfer, Lejain Bakhshwain, and uh, Ragad Bajaba. They were getting in total more than one hundred thousand, one hundred seventy thousand dollar. Mm -hmm. awards for their first feature films mm -hmm. and uh, I, I believe uh, there is a unique uh, content and uh, unique uh, ideas are coming with our students and the community and uh, international viewers are really keen to watch whatever our students and alumni are producing because those are talking about very unique uh, Society, we did we didn't know much about the the local uh, culture. We uh, for many years it was very preserved and very uh, construct uh, like conservative, and uh, we didn't know much about what is happening in the community, and uh, uh, the image was very stereotyped. Whenever you talk about the Arab or Saudi or Muslim or Anyone from Middle East is always stereotyped by special features. 
Mm -hmm. And uh, this feature where uh, the, these features were uh, wasn't uh, or weren't that positive all the time. So for first time, we have uh, our students and our alumni are trying to shape uh, an accurate uh, or an honest uh, image for this society. And uh, I believe they were successful in many ways to represent the. Uh, Saudi Arabian uh, culture or community or family or personality or even the Saudi woman. This was very important for the international community to see how the Saudi are looking to themselves and how they represent themselves on the big screen mm -hmm. and the, how they communicate the, uh, their uh, dreams or concerns or fears through the medium of cinema. Before, before our uh, graduates are contributing by their films, there was very little uh, number of movies produced in the country. I believe uh, it wasn't that desert, but it was, uh, there was a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, personal or independent uh, uh, initiatives. I don't think it was enough to represent a big country like Saudi Arabia, uh, more than 33 million inhabitants, and uh, mm -hmm. need more than uh, one school or one group of filmmakers. We need more and more of them. So that's why it was <coughs> it was very important to have our own film school and to have our our uh, alumni are contributing and shaping with a new image. And I, I believe they were very uh, connected with the new vision of the country 2030, which is uh, integrating uh, entertainment and culture in the new society and how this will modernize the Saudi community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, the students are all locals, right? Or are they from... No, we, we know we have students from, uh, in our department from around nine different countries. Uh -huh. In our university, we have students from more than 40 countries. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how, if it's okay to ask, how are the tuition fees for the students? Are they high, low? It's high, but the uh, university is offering a scholarship, and this is quite... Uh, uh, it's important to support the students and to, to support their own uh, education. Uh, universities offer is offering uh, uh, up to 50 percent uh, uh, scholarship that's why it's a little bit uh, supportive for them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this was as a movie pulse interviews thank you for watching and hopefully see you soon have a nice day bye